Okay, folks, here we are with another technical video. I have had a lot of questions about the data logger output in the last few videos that I took at the track, both G2 and ECR. And people were asking how I got that data. Well, here's the answer. This is the I2M Chrome Dash. It replaces the OEM Ducati dashboard. And I was able to make these this switch pod that gives you full control over the functions of the dash. So this has so many options available. It's just dizzying to see all of the things it can do. And so we've got multiple different displays that we can show. We can configure each of those displays. And then we've got uh, these little digital displays that can show any amount of data. So for example, just for convenience sake, it shows the front pressure, front tire pressure, 27.3, rear tire pressure, 11.3. And it also can show tire temperature. Uh, it's currently, well, ooh, just lost the Wi-Fi connection. And it also, that blue line connects, it shows connection to the, Jeep, uh, the GoPro camera. But of course I'm using that right now, so it can't connect, it's, although it's trying. So, in order to take a look at some of the other functions, for example, APS is actually the throttle, or should I say the torque demand sensor. So when I twist the throttle, it goes all the way up to 200. That is also how I was able to diagnose a previous version of this throttle that was faulty. Okay, so we've got temperature, atmospheric pressure, uh, lean angle, fuel consumption, torque reduction factor, and of course, lambda. Hmm, interesting. I'm not sure if that's really what that is. But anyway, uh, throttle position sensor for the vertical and horizontal. So that's actually showing what the throttle is really doing. So I may be twisting this, but until the engine's running, the actual throttle bodies under here are not doing anything. And of course, pitch angle, lap count. And so there's the front pressure and the front temperature. Rear pressure, rear temperature, and the analog right here is what we're really interested in because that's connected to the brake lever via this sensor right here, which just comes off the caliper onto this sensor through here and into analog two. So you can see as I squeeze the lever, the value increases. That's also a CAN bus value, but for some reason, the chrome is not able to differentiate between that and the background noise, or at least what they call the CAN signal. Oddly enough, the, the AIM Solo DL that I have can read the brake pressure from this, but I mainly got that for the supermoto. Anyway, so <clears throat> that's how I get the brake pressure, but what I've just done is I have connected these linear sensors to the suspension. And the fender is going to go over here, of course. Uh, these come from those clever chaps at Haltech. And they are much more affordable than the original I2M sensors. But I will, of course, need to calibrate them in the math channels in the data, in the, the data logger software. But as you'll see, when I pull up on the suspension, the, the value increases. When I push down, it decreases. So I just need to find the relationship between the front travel <clears throat> and the rear, because I also have one back here. You can see that it's mounted perfectly in line with the shock mount and the shock, of course, moves 65 millimeters at this point right here. And then the leverage ratio sees the wheel move 130 millimeters. But it's not a linear relationship. The, the curve looks more like this. And I have to find out what that formula is that defines that curve. And to do that, 
I got this one. This started this whole process because it was really cheap. So I've been experimenting with this. What I'm going to do is plug it in and attach it here to measure the actual wheel, tr wheel travel. 